so before we jump and dive into that a bit more, can you give us a bit of background about the machine learning path at Mercado Libre? And how far, how long ago did they start down this path and how did it come about? Okay. In, in my experience, we've been working with them for, for five years. So let's say five years ago, they started buying us, buying services from us as a startup providing and Maquinari was already uh, well known in Latin America and mostly in Argentina as the company doing uh, data science or machine learning. And, and Mercado Libre already had a couple of teams doing some machine learning, but you know, mostly for fraud detection uh, and then for the recommendations systems. So I'd say between 10 to seven years ago, they started doing, applying machine learning to, to solve uh, production problems. Uh, when, when we started working with them, each team had a, a different approach. So some of them were trying to buy IBM Watson some years ago, as soon as it started, you know. And they were really just doing all ad hoc stuff on the cloud, on, on building their own pipelines and trying to, to solve their own little problems. But it was really very specific solutions to, to separate problems. Okay, and after we started working with them, we could see that they were not, you know, it was different, separate solutions, separate efforts, okay? And we were a company with, with already a lot of experience and doing a lot of machine learning for a long time. So you start to, you, know, you have your processes and you don't reinvent the wheel. And we, have our, we had our own little products to, uh, you know, wrap up models in a REST API, for example. So we could see there was a lot of our work we could you know, expand within the organization. So we started working with them maybe five years ago uh, and they started taking some things from us in this relationship. And now for the last two years, we started building this platform that now it's, it's a really easy machine in Mercalibre to start experimenting, accessing data and getting infrastructure. Yeah, so talk to us a bit about Fury. What is Fury and who came up with that name? Because that's a great name for it. A yeah, it's a great name. <laughs> so Fury, first it's called Fury because, okay, you know, we are, okay, lots of nerdy guys and Avengers stuff and, you know, Nick Fury is such a badass, you know. And then the guy who was leading this team, he, he had a, you know, patch on his eye. So, <laughs> you know, nobody wanted to call him Fury. <laughs> But then, you know, they got the chance to name something Fury <laughs> that he was leading. <laughs> so, yeah, the name is just, you know, a product name, which is great. And uh, it, it's, a, by definition, a platform as a service. Developers in Mercado Libre, you go to this Fury interface. It's basically a, a framework to develop and deploy microservices. microservices. So, basically, when you start an, an app there, you get a repository with, with a some standard interfaces, like it's going to be dockerized, your app's going to be dockerized. So you write your repository, we have all a continuous integration, automatic process there that then you can, you know, create infrastructure. You, you're abstracted from, from the infrastructure. The platform is a cloud independent. We're working with different cloud providers. So for the developers, it's transparent. We, you don't really know where your application is being deployed. And it scales automatically provides monitoring and, and, you know, logs and metrics. So it's really to, we don't have DevOps in our teams, okay? We have this Fury platform and, and the, the badass DevOps are like building the platform and, and you know, maintaining this. And developers are, are, it's really abstracting them from a lot of things. And it's, this allowed Mercado Libre to grow, you know, from like 400 or three or 400 developers to, to about 3,000 in, in maybe six, seven years. Wow. Okay. It, 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 it's got, uh, Mercado Libre is 20 years old. So they started and it, Mercado Libre had the biggest cloud, one of the biggest clouds in the world before the cloud was actually a thing, you know. But then when, when you know, when that asserted, when the, the cloud started, Mercado Libre had a lot of infrastructure. So they had to decide, are we going to keep this? Are we going to move? So they decided to move to the cloud. So. You know, through the years, you have to start, you know, moving and migrating all your stuff and, and then, you know, close all these data centers. And then it was this thing where you had, you know, access to the cloud. Like you have your virtual machine in, 
or do whatever. And then that's impossible to maintain. You know, every you know, team was choosing a different stack, a different technology, a different database, a different, mm-hmm. you know, queue. So they started creating these fuel. You say, okay, you know, let, let's build our own services. Let's, let's abstract the, the, you know, the services and the infrastructure. So that's Fury, you know, it's for web apps. So then what, is, uh, what exactly is this Fury data apps that comes in on the machine yeah, learning cool. level? Yeah, it's like a, an extension, an in-house built extension to Fury to do data science and machine learning. And can okay, you so now a bit of an for overview example, of how that, yes, that looks? Yes, yes. Um, first, we, we have, it, it's working, it's been working for a year and a half. So we, actually we started to, you know, bring users in very quickly with a very simple pipeline. And that is now maybe, I wouldn't say technical depth, but it's a great drawback. Our pipeline is you have an ETL task. So you have a place where you can do data processing. So it's with a few clicks, you, can, you have a, a machine that has got access to the data sources which was difficult for the, for the teams to get. So now you really are in an environment, secure network environment with permissions to access all the data sources. And, and, and the instances with enough you know, power to do stuff, because again, microservices, you have these certain flavors that you're using for microservices, but then you need a lot of GPU, uh, CPU or a lot of, of memory to process big data sets. So we gave them this. Then you click, you say, I want an ETL machine, and then you have your ETL process running there. Then similar to that, we had a, a, a training step, a machine where you are supposed to train your model. So then we started giving a versioning. So you version your ETL processes, then you version your training processes related to an ETL process. We store your data, and the training machines, then you have GPUs, and you have a specific, uh, infrastructure for tra- model training process. And then the output of a training is a model. And you can work with basically whatever technology, as long as it's Python. <laughs> like uh, Henry Ford used to say, you can choose whatever color as long as it is black. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so you can choose whatever technology to do your data science as long as it is Python. <laughs> okay. But okay, it's, it's a, as always, it's a trade-off. I think it's a, it's a good trade-off. You know, we're not Saying you know it's only TensorFlow or it's only scikit left. It's not. It's whatever as long as you can do it in Python. And then we have a we, we automated the the creating a REST API from your model, so data scientists can quickly get a model and from there just by configuration they can deploy infrastructure that will automatically scale uh, with your model serving as, as a REST API. Okay. So all these services, I want infrastructure with access to the data. I want a place where to train models and I want an easy way to deploy a model. Uh, that and then you have uh, Jupyter Labs as a service. So you click, and you say, I want a, a Jupyter Lab instance, and you get there a Jupyter Lab instance. And so this is today mostly of what Fury Data Apps uh, provides. Okay. So accessing the data was, you know, it is a, a great problem in machine learning. So we are somehow uh, attacking that. There are, as I said before, data is all over. It's all around. Yeah. So we have, you know, some other teams working on a data lake. So some da- some curated data is already in place there, and they have infrastructure like Hive and Presto to, you know, query and process that data. So we didn't have to solve it. So from, from your lab or from your ETL, you would just, you know, uh, trigger a query on Hive, and it's going to process in some other infrastructure. And then some teams that are now working on, for example, Spark clusters have access to the data. So we're not holding it ourselves as a core team of, the, of FDA, you know, Fury Data Apps. So, yeah. But then does that yeah. plug into the Fury Data Apps? Yeah, we, w- we, want to, we want to enable what we call um, external innovation. So if the BI team is doing this great, uh, you know, Spark cluster and they've got the resources to actually, you know, maintain it, like they, can, they have like a budget for this infrastructure and they can keep it alive and they can provide it as a service. We want to, we want to be able to use it from FDA. So you know, there is another team, for example, we have a team working on our, a feature catalog right, in, the, in, the, in, the fraud, in the fraud area. Okay, so they've got really strong representations of 
of entities as payments or, or, or customers, okay? Real good machine learning valuable representations and that they are computing almost real time, okay? So it's a big problem and they're solving it because they need to, so we want to integrate with them, okay? So in that sense, we are building this platform but we're also trying to not do everything because, okay, we all know it's, it's, it's huge. You know? Every little problem requires a, a team, effort, a budget, 